Uh, partitioning in stage five is one of the most fundamental elements of actually being able to do addition. In fact, it's one of the most fundamental parts of all maths, especially with number, because being able to partition allows children to do multiplication, allows them to do subtraction, addition, you can use it for division, you can use it for everything. So really, really important. The more confident the children are, the more they'll be able to do it. And obviously it feeds in really nicely into the later um, stages that we've already looked at, which we'll be looking at later on. So for partitioning, um, the question on the actual um, calculation policy is 56 plus 41. Now, when you use partition, you have a load of different methods that you can go and actually refer to. Um, the key is to be able to understand how you actually partition numbers. Now, there's a little video in a second which we'll show on here, which hopefully you'll be able to go and use to support you, which is a stage before the bit I'm going to show now, but it'll make more sense. If we do 56 and 41, what we need to go and do is make sure we can split partition of the 56 into its two parts. So we have 50 and 6. When we look at 41, we want to be able to partition that into its two parts as well. 40 and 1. Now the children in class might have cards, they can use physical resources, there's all sorts of different things they can go and use to actually partition numbers and help them understand the different bits. So, what they will do is they will look to actually add the parts together. So 50 and 40 becomes 50 plus 40, which gives us 90. 6 plus 1 gives us 7. We add those two parts together so it becomes 90 plus 7 equals 97 and we put the answer back up here to be clear. Obviously getting to that stage is going to be quite is the most important part. So if you just follow this video that will help you to have a better understanding of how um, we can partition the numbers using physical resources. So as discussed, when you're looking at 56 added to 41 or any numbers like this, the first thing we want to do is be able to partition numbers and we'll be teaching obviously on the early stages as you've seen already, and to partition numbers using actual physical stuff. Now one of the best resources we have is the Dean's or the Base 10 resources which allow you to look at tens and ones as actual physical blocks. So each one of these rods here is worth ten. You can actually see them if you want to have a little close-up little line there. And each one relates to one ten. So the number 56 is shown as five tens, which makes 50, and six ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just checking my own count there. So you've got 56 plus 41. We do the same with 40, one, we have four tenths and a single one. So by partitioning, it allows us to actually just focus on the tens first and the one second. So quite simply, I'm going to move these ones just over here for a moment or two, and then I bring the tens over here, so they're all together. So although they've been partitioned into 56 and 40 and one, I can now just look at the tens, which basically means I'm going to go 50 plus 40. Now for those that you've already had in the game, you'll know that 50 plus 40 equals 90. So I can double check it with my actual resources. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Really important to check. Oh, that's what we encourage children to do. If they think they know the answer, write it down, but then check with the resources and it becomes more confident. So the first part, 50 plus 40, gives us 90. We then go back to the 1s, which we know we have 6, and we actually have a 1. So the children will feel really confident at this point, and will say straight away to know the answer. But it's always worthwhile checking, and the more they check, the less they check later on. So we have our 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six. We know we've got six ones there, so we really didn't need to count those. We have an extra one, we put it on, and that now makes seven. So 90 and seven, add them together, gives us 97. Now, sometimes we'll have questions whereby the children will actually have to go and count across a boundary. So you might have a different question. We use some similar numbers, let's just make that one a little bit different. So we'll have our 40. We might go and have to say 56 like we did before. 
So this time we've got 45. Make it look a bit different. If those get ahead of the game, hopefully everybody starts to spot what's going to go on. We use the same process again. We move the digits over here, we use the ones over here. We've got our five tens and our four tens. So we partition numbers, so we have our 50 plus 40, which we already know gives us 90. And that's another thing to encourage children to do. If they've already done something, they know that 50 plus 40 equals 90. They don't need to go and keep repeating it. Obviously, early on, we want them to get used to it, so perhaps repetition's okay early on. But the more confident they become those facts, the more they should be able to readily use them. So we've got our five tens and our four tens, which we know makes 90. We feel quite confident about that one. Now, some children will know their number bonds, six and five, what it makes. Some children won't, and that's okay. And that's what the partition is all about. So we have our six, firstly. And we have our five over here. But what we always want to go and do is when we are adding numbers together, we want to try and work towards our multiples of ten. And that always helps. So, if I get to my little cubes here, I know I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Really, I should have started at six and counted on. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now, so I know that 6 plus 5 equals 11. Some children will feel very confident that 90 plus 11 equals 101. Some children need to go and look more closely at actually what the 10 have got. So if you have 10 cubes, you replace the 10 individual cubes with 1 10. So that goes over there. I've now got 10 tens, which we can also replace a little bit further. So there's a single block of 100. Take those ones away. I've got 100 and a single one there. So then I go back and I can go 90 plus 10 gives me 100. And then 100 plus 1 equals 101. Well, it turns out if the children are confident, it could just quite simply be 90 plus 11. Will give us the answer 101. Same answer. And then go back up here and make sure the answer is nice and clear and explicit.